up nepa <laughs> that's the popular slang every nigerian knows did you ever say up nepa mm? no. yeah <laughs> I, th I think I still find myself saying Nepal. Yeah, yeah, so it's um, used when the power is restored. Now, in 2013, two segments of Nigeria's power sector generation and distribution were prioritized to resolve the challenges associated with the, um, the uh, prior monopoly of government in power generation, transmission, and distribution. But nothing has changed. Now, our guest, Weber Boa, is the CEO of All On and joined the team from Boston Consulting Group, where he was one of the founders of the strategy firm Lagos Office. Now, prior to BCG, Dr. Boa spent five years with the Hairs Holding Group in Lagos, playing roles including chief of staff to chairman, director of strategy, and CEO of the Tony Elumelu Foundation. Now, remember, you can join this conversation, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways to Africa 1 with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 Thanks for joining us, Dr. Bieber. Good to be oh, here. Dr. Boer. Dr. Boer. <laughs> well, I don't Bieber. know. Justin Bieber is in my head right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we, we look alike and I can sing like that too. So. Oh, oh interesting. Don't let us tempt you to sing for us. No, 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 wait, no. Let's not go there. Okay, okay, so let's come back to power. So when we, we, the news came of privatization and all of that, we said, okay, maybe finally. I mean, if we see, we've seen. There's some uh, hope. We've seen a lot of private businesses doing so well, you know, in their private businesses and all of that. So what's going to happen to us here in Nigeria? Okay, if they privatize this, maybe perhaps we might see something good happening. How has that worked for us in the power sector? Well, you know, you mentioned the privatization of two of the three segments yes. of the power sector, right? Mm -hmm. The transmission, transmission was left as fully government, yes. right? So it would have been like, to some extent, giving out mobile licenses and then saying, oh, but you have to use NITEL infrastructure hmm. 20 years ago. You know, where would MTN and all, all of those be now? They would still be dead. They, were, they would never have grown, right? right. So it, it, was, it was sort of something put in there that almost made it unlikely to succeed. Um, in addition, then the regulation was 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 done. Uh, there was overregulation in terms of the tariffs, so that the distribution companies are not actually earning the revenue they need to earn to actually pay for what to their own operations. Mm -hmm. And then you know, once you start there, that they're not getting paid enough, then the transmission isn't getting paid enough, then the Genco's generation isn't getting paid enough, then the gas providers aren't getting. So the whole chain is broken. Okay. Um, and 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 because of that, I mean, we're what seven years, six and a half years later. Um, the companies haven't really been able to invest further. We really don't have that many more households that are, or businesses that are metered. So we're not really that far, that, that much improved from when we were then. Um, you know, we have 4,000 megawatts on the grid on a very good day. For our size of our population and even just for basic development, the rule is normally you have 1,000 megawatts per 1 million people. So if we really have 200 million people, we should have 200,000 megawatts on our grid and we only have four. Wow. And 4,000. To put that in perspective, um, South Africa has about 50 million people with 50,000 megawatts, so they're, they're about right. Um, there's the, the tiny island nation of Trinidad and Tobago has 2,400 megawatts on their grid, and their entire population can fit in two local governments in Lagos. Wow. And then not to talk of the rest of Nigeria. So we are really, really, really behind on our grid. And unfortunately, since privatization, everything that's gone into it has just been to maintain that woefully short supply that we already have rather than any investment to add to it. So if I hear you correctly, where the challenge is, is from transmission. The challenge is everywhere. But I mean, it, so yeah, transmission no, yeah. is fully government owned. Yeah. Right, so then, you know, the, there isn't the sort of the private sector approach of, okay, let's repair this, let's make it work better, let's fix this, let's invest. But then, you know, even the privatized parts of, this, of, the, of the industry, the, the disco, distribution companies, the generation companies, also because they're, they're not getting paid also don't have the funds to invest and grow and increase. And then if you think about when the privatization happened, a year later, Nigeria went into recession, the Naira devalued, all these companies bought the, in, bought the assets with dollar-denominated debt, mm -hmm. and the tariff didn't go up, so the, the Naira they were earning went, was still the same, but now their debts they owed actually, you know, in Naira they owed twice as much as they owed before. Yeah. Okay. You know, and, and so you just, you know, okay. you put that in, in, in you know, it's not going to work. Um, 
recently, um, I think it was two weeks ago, I can't remember when, I took the story on what, in what's in the news, and the DG of um, Transmission was saying that um, for us to have a power supply, they, they just must increase the tariff. Yes, absolutely. But the burden, Mr. Dr. Borek, mm -hmm. comes back to us, right. the consumers. But, but let me put this in perspective. Right now, we have a, a, a power sector, an on-grid power sector that is totally broken because at the, at the beginning of the chain, what people who do actually even pay, a lot of people don't even pay their bills anyway, but those who do actually pay are paying a tariff that is way below even the cost of delivering that power. Mm. So nothing can work. And it's, these are private companies. They're supposed to make money that they can then reinvest and grow the sector. So that's kind of stifling it. If we don't increase tariffs, nothing will ever change. Now, what's odd, though, is that our tariffs for on-grid tariffs are, are quite low compared to anywhere else in the world, right? Or, or very competitive. Yet, Ni the typical Nigerian consumer doesn't want to pay for that, yet will pay three, four times that to have their own diesel generator. Doesn't make sense. So there's something, there's a little bit of irrationality in our whole power sector that we really need to understand. Okay. You know what I think? I think the reason um, a lot of Nigerians don't like to pay, because mm -hmm. you're right, mm -hmm. we don't get to pay a lot. But the, the, the challenge is, it's like, so I'm supposed to pay 60,000 mm there -hmm. for a month, and then I pay that, and in an entire month, I don't mm -hmm. get up to 10 hours power supply. Right. The next right. month, I wouldn't be interested to be. I'm right. like, okay, right. I might right. as well just yeah. snub off the electricity right. company and just go get my diesel. Right, right. Yeah, no, exactly. It's because of the unpredictability. Right. Um, but just to be clear, there are actually two places in Nigeria that have 24-7 power. And where they exist, then people are happy to pay. So one is the plateau where I grew up. I grew up in Jos. Absolutely. I was going to say yes. that. I've never On been On the to outskirts Joss. of Jos is a company called Nesco, the Nigeria Electric Supply They've Company. Been there for years. Started, it was, the first turbine was put in place in 1926. It's still, still operating almost 100 years later. The company was formed in 1929, and they have basically been generating power for seven local, rural local governments in Plateau for almost 100 years, 24-7 power. People in those communities don't need generators. And it basically worked because it was never government. It was always private. And so they had, you know, okay, you're my customer, I will provide power and you will pay me and we will all be happy. Um, you know, unfortunately, where I lived in Joss, we were in the town, in the city. And so we had to be on NEPA. Mm. But then all our friends who were in Bukuru and Vom and all these other places had 24 seven power and they would tell us, look, when, when Nesco was going to shut the power off, they would actually like send them a, a message and a gift and say, you know, sorry, you know, on Sunday from, you know, noon to 2pm, it's going to be off. I mean, it's unheard of, but, but we saw it there, and that company is still there. The, the other place then is actually on Bonnie Island, um, yeah. which is not as old, but about 20 years ago, NLNG and then the oil companies, the IOCs, basically set up a utility there, which was owned by the community, powered from NLNG, um, and then you know the community pays a highly subsidized tariff, but they happily pay, and any profits go into this community utility and then are used to develop the community. So, so those are two places where if you live in those places, you have power and it shows we can do it if you just have the right information. I'll come to place. that. Uh, let me let okay. AK so come I was, in. I was going to ask that, why can't we replicate that? Is it because of the laws? Why can't we just replicate that? Because I, I hear what you're saying mm -hmm. and there's some estates in Lagos mm -hmm. that are off-grid, that's mm -hmm. the word to use, right. off-grid. Right. Obviously, there's 24 hours power, right, and right. people are willing to pay. So yeah. I agree with you yeah. on that. But why can't we have um, what's the name of the company? Why can't we have Nesco. those yeah. companies? What's stopping? You know, what's stopping that? Right. Okay. Again, we talked about it. The system is broken. Part government, part private. Yes. You know, and and no one's paying what they're supposed to pay. Nothing's reliable, etc. So it's very difficult. Um, but there's no reason why the on-grid sector can't work. And even though my company, we invest in off-grid companies. You know, the gap in Nigeria is so big, everything has to work for us to turn the power sector around. But fundamentally, I mean, the reason, you know, when we look at problems that big that don't seem to make sense, you always have to dig below the surface and ask, what is the real reason why this has been bro so broken and why it has been not invested in properly and why it doesn't work? And the reason is diesel. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not the generators themselves, because you buy, gen you know, you buy, gen it's the, it's, the, it's the buying and selling of diesel and the delivery of diesel, right? Mm -hmm. If you think of every office in Nigeria, every, every office complex, it's, it's every government office, every business. bank branch, every estate, yes. diesel is delivered. And in the process of that delivery and so on, not all the diesel that is supposed to be delivered is delivered, and some, a lot of that is then shared. And it is a fantastic way to share money, 
that is totally off the books. Wow. And if you think across thousands and thousands of locations across Nigeria, this is happening every day in the public and the private sector. Obviously, you don't want that to stop, so you will do everything you can to make sure it always fails. Sorry, does this also affect, because I've always wondered why everybody cannot have a metered, um, um, what you call it, the prepaid meters? Right. Or prepaid. Yeah. Why can't we Doesn't all make sense. have it? So, let me explain. So, some of our investees have what we call mini grids. And so, these are like integrated utilities in rural, part, rural communities in Nigeria that are off the grid. So, maybe a, a, a village of 400 households, let's say 2,000 people, they put 100 kilowatts of solar, they, they generate it right there, have a small distribution network, meter every household. And these are very low income rural populations and they happily pay for the power something like eight times what you pay for the grid power and they are happily paying it's pay as you go power so they get 100 percent of the revenue now that's because they're metered and it's because you pay as you go these are smart meters that cost roughly 30 dollars and then there's a small fee every year for using the software mm. if we could put that on every household and business in nigeria we could solve that problem very quickly but the regulator insists on having outdated meters that are like instead of $30 or like several hundred dollars and that can actually be messed with. Mm. And so, the, so yeah. even though technology has gone so far ahead, we're still stuck back. Oh, Dr. Bo, uh, yes. let me ask you I mean, a question. Thank you for being honest. <laughs> He's being honest too. Yes. Let us face our problem. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a question and I, I think it's linked to what I was going to ask. I, someone says, I live in Magodo mm -hmm. and have almost 24 mm -hmm. hour light. We mm -hmm. have to pay much. Yes still prefer this than generating mm -hmm. electricity mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, so what is a real, realistic solution to providing 24-hour power um, timeline? We need power to improve on all sectors mm -hmm. of our economy. Mm -hmm. This is right. one person saying it. Because right. I know that in Joss, when mm -hmm. I went to visit my, my older sister, she used to live in Joss, and mm -hmm. recently again, my brother-in-law, I heard about that community mm -hmm. and all of that, but it was done in small clusters. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I can, okay, so they say, let's say, Lekki like phase one, let's say a company handles power there, mm -hmm. generates 24 hours, wouldn't it be a lot easier if the, if the, the power is decentralized mm -hmm. so that it, it means that, okay, um, all on goes mm -hmm. to uh, Magodo phase two and is mm -hmm. powering that yeah. another company goes to this company and powering, would that not yeah. be a much more realistic right. solution? Yeah. No, so that is happening. I mean, so if you look at the way that the whole concept of a national grid was developed, it was basically in Europe and the US and other places like that, there were small sort of mini grids all over that then were consolidated and eventually became a national grid. And then around when Nigeria started developing our power sector, that was the way it was done. And so we built a national grid, even though it was, it was just of that time that that was the trend. Now, all of that is being done, you know, done differently. So like Germany has, I think, Two million power generation mm. cool. I mean, points because wow. even households that generate solar can put it into the grid wow. and so instead of you know this sort of concept we have stuck in our minds in nigeria they have a centralized national grid other parts of the world where we copied it from have gone way beyond that right and so yes the solution here is we need to find ways to you know first of all we do need to increase the overall generation the transmission all that but then also find ways that we can generate locally power locally and and open up the regulation to allow that now there is regulation that does allow it, but it's usually in two, the amounts are too small, right? Mm -hmm. It's one megawatt, two megawatts. After that, you need to get licenses that can be complex. Um, if it's above 20 megawatts, I believe it has to go into the grid, yeah. uh, you know, and, and on and on. And these are things that just, we need, to, we need to remove those one by one and then just totally open up the market. All right, so, but um, but Magodo is a good example of, yeah. of what can be done. Yeah. And it's Ikeja Disco that's doing it. Yes, right. that is it. Um, yeah. And so discos can do it, when they when they're when they're sort of allowed to be a little creative, mm -hmm. and and there's more of that kind of Co kind that of can, that proper, happen, you know yeah. innovation. All right, so you know what? We'll take a quick mm -hmm. break now. We'll still have um, Dr. Um, Boa with us. Um, we'll be right back. Mm -hmm.